Hello to my learners. My name is Anil, and you are watching uh, my YouTube channel English Unleashed. Because I got some request to uh, make a video for the answers of Science Part Two, therefore I am coming up with this video. So as I had uploaded a video, PISA CCT Five, where we solved the answers of question number one to ten of English section. Today this video will talk about the how to find out the answers or find out the correct answers of science section. So there were two units on science part. Uh, the, this is the first unit from question number twenty one to thirty. There were total ten questions, which were from science part. So unit seven, and there are ten questions, five questions based on this unit seven. Let us find out the answers. See, I am just going to read it, read it out for you. Unit seven, finding the way. By the fifteenth century, people on ships and boats solved the problem of finding out what direction they were sailing in. and perhaps even more importantly what direction they needed to go to back home before that time sailors rarely ventured out of sight of land and instead relied on visible landmarks to get from place to place this limited traders and navies to routes close to shore but the invention of the compass changed all that the magnetic compass contains a magnetic element that aligns itself with the earth's magnetic field think of the earth as a big magnet It has two magnetic pole, poles oriented north and south that are very close to the geographic north and south poles. When a magnet or a magnetic element such as the mineral lodestone or a ferrous metal that has been magnetized is allowed to float freely, it will affect effectively point north and south. Thus, showing you which direction you are going in relation to that axis. So this is how this talks about the how the compass works and what was the what was there behind the discovery of. uh what lied behind the discovery of magnets so basically you can see the earth and there are two poles one is geographic north pole and another is magnetic north pole so basically we uh, scientists feel that earth uh, it, it's not just about the feeling but earth behaves like a magnet and therefore we have geographic north pole which is actually the earth's north pole and we have magnet that also behaves like uh, or aligns itself along the magnetic lines of the earth so you can see these all magnetic lines coming out of the earth just like a magnet which is in the center so now the first question the compass always points towards the north which one of the following is the correct explanation for this so the question is why does the compass point towards the north so it's very easy from the passage itself we have find out the found out the first the b part b part is the answer the magnetic needle of the compass aligns itself with the earth's magnetic field let us check out the answer so question 20 question number 21 option b yes so 21 answer is b part the magnetic needle of the compass aligns itself with the earth's magnetic field now coming to question number 22 from the image above what can you say about the direction of the magnetic field on the earth the answer has been started for you completed in terms of geographical north and south poles the magnetic lines of force of the earth emerge so they basically emerge from the two magnetic poles so we have we have to complete the statement by seeing the diagram also you can find out the answer it emerges from the two magnetic poles oriented north and south that are very close to the geographic north and south poles this is exactly from where they are emerging question number 23 the image above shows how iron filling so if you spill iron filling you must have done this experiment in school also if you spill iron iron particles which are known as iron fillings they arrange themselves in a magnet and they arrange themselves along the magnetic lines so based on this experiment and arrangement density of iron fillings so where do you have the density is the highest you see this this pole where my arrow is pointing this and this south so basically the density is highest at these things so we can say it is along north and south pole so i think the answer is option number d and it is correct question number 23 answer number d Now coming to question number twenty-four. Sabha has three metal bars. To understand if they are magnets or not, she undertakes a small experiment and holds the ends of the bars close to one another. The results of this experiment are plotted below. See, things can attract, but if you really want to check a magnet is a true magnet, then it must hold the property of repulsion. So, the answer. Oh, let's get back to question ones. This is the observation. End five of bar one. It attracts. It repels. It attracts. And it attracts. All right. So. bar 1 and bar 2 answer is bar 1 and bar 2 because they are showing repulsion right 
so both bar 3 does not repel it only attracts therefore it is not a magnet so answer should be both bar 1 and bar 2 now coming to question number 25 Yogesh takes a magnetic compass in the lab and tries to show how it works to his friends but it does not work well in the laboratory it just swings to and forth he then takes it out in the field and it started working so when he was in the lab it was not working properly he went out in the field and it started working properly what do you think could be the possible reason for this a very simple reason in the field there might not be any other magnetic thing but in the lab there might be some other magnetic things which might be interfering with the fields of magnetic compass and therefore it could not work properly let us read the answer also in the laboratory there could be many other magnetic and electrical instruments the magnetic effects of those instruments can influence the small magnetic needle and hence in the laboratory the needle might not point accurately to the geographical north but in the field there are no magnetic and electrical instruments and hence there will be almost no magnetic effect interference on the magnetic needle now we will jump on to unit number 8 green invaders question number 26 let's read the passage once the residents of Nangarnalore and Adambakkam wanted to revive an environment park on Adambakkamiri the lake needs to be desilted and deepened and a bund is to be formed for a bund is to be formed for a walker's path Moreover, steps are to be taken to prevent the discharge of sea waste through storm water drains and the dumping of garbage on the lake burns. The environmentalists say that the invasive species like water hyacinth have clogged this water body. Also, you must have studied about water hyacinth. They just cover the whole water body and then convert it into desert kind of thing. Also, the discharge of sea waste into the lake has resulted in the growth of unwanted plant. This is blocking the air water interface, thereby reducing the dissolved oxygen in the water and killing a lot of fish. So basically, all the living beings that live under the water, especially fishes, they die because of this. It chokes the living beings that live under the water. The water body is clogged by the invasive species also become a breeding ground for mosquitoes. The state government has been requested to expedite the works for this at the earliest. Now let's go for the question. When an alien species plant or animal that does not belong to an ecosystem is introduced, it spreads and competes with the native plants. So uh, for space and nutrients and becomes problematic in the absence of natural uh, natural enemies. These intruders are called invasive alien species. Why are they called invasive? Because they attack the native plants and alien because they are coming from the outside. So now we have to tell what are the effects of an invasive species like water hyacinth. So what are the harmful effects? Now there are four options given over here. Even if you don't read the answer, just read these statements and try to find out which things support the ill effects of an invasive. Let's find out the answer once. So basically it says uh, option number A, question number 27, option number, sorry, question number 26, option number B. So let us find out why B. First, blockage of sunlight. Yes, there will be blockage of sunlight because uh, aquatic, they just cover the water body. Uh, then we have th starving the water of carbon dioxide. No, they take a lot of oxygen. So it won't affect, uh, it won't affect the carbon dioxide level. Then we have third domination phasing out of fish. Yes, correct. Then we have change in water quality with respect to dissolved oxygen and water pH due to release of carbon dioxide. Yes, true. Starving the water of oxygen. Yes, because they take away, they take away all the oxygen. Uh, they suck the oxygen out of the water body. Desilting of the water body. No. An increase in algal blooms. Huh, this is true. So based on the passage above, you can find out a lot of similarities. And then option number B, you will find out is the correct answer. So basically it requires prerequisite knowledge. You must have knowledge, some knowledge before this and then you will be able to attempt. Okay, question number 27. Which one of the following is not an indicator of the degradation of a water body? So not an indicator, not indicator. Okay. So if there is increased transparency, so uh, decrease species diversity, this is an indicator. Increase sedimentation, this is an indicator. Decrease oxygen content, this is an indicator. Only this option, option number A. If transparency of water increases, it means it is pure water, it's clean water. So this is not an indi uh, indicator of degradation of water body. Option number A. Question number 27, option number A. Correct. Now let's go to uh, question number 28. There was a news headline in the local newspaper which said invasive species are the largest threat to animal population. Major threats to animal populations. Exploitation 37%, habit degradation and change 31%, habitat loss, climate change, invasive species, pollution disease. Based on the data given above, complete the conclusion stated below. Conclusion. As per the data, the headline is because the two major threats to animal population are. We have to find out the two major 
animal to major threats to animal population so the answer let's check the answer the headline is false and misleading because two major threats to animal population are exploitation and habitat degradation and change so we have to find out two major threats to animal population what are this first is the habitat degradation and change this is the first and exploitation so headline is false Admissive say this is not the largest threat of animal population and we all know this we have destroyed the habitat and degradation so we are more more responsible for all this instead of invasive species i'll read out the answer once again as per the data the headline is false or misleading because the two major threats to animal population are exploitation and habitat degradation and change now question number 29 which characteristic of species would make it more likely to become invasive which are the characteristics which will make them invasive characteristics fast growth if they grow fast will it make them invasive yes slow growth no so no second correct fifth slow reproduction no slow growth no sensitivity to change in available food and nutrients inhabitant no rest all are yes now question number 30 Raka wants to undertake a survey to support the hypothesis non-native invasive plants make it difficult for native plants to grow the steps that are required are listed below but in the jumbled order so we have to arrange them so this is a survey and we have to support this hypothesis so how will you arrange all this let us find out the you will have to go through this this will require at least two minutes all right so option number is c let us find out we will find out what is the reason for this yes so option number c fifth first of all read about invasive species from books correct first you will get a knowledge about them then eighth identify native invasive then you will try to identify them third you will earmark an area for study right fair then you will go for this take careful tour of the area to locate invasive plant by using images option number c is the correct answer all right then you will go for a first point as per observation make a note of the number of species that are suspected invasive in this area then you will note from the time of growth of invasive species then finally you will observe the death of some native species and then as per your observation you will make a note of number of species this will require time this is a question that will require time because you have to arrange and you have to check so if you really want to increase your speed in this question then you must be have a reading habit if you have a reading habit you will be able to do this thank you so much and as per the request i have completed this video and i'll be uploading it today uh, don't forget to share like and subscribe english unleashed thank you so much